Now here on the Gary Explains channel, I've covered lots of different types of microcontrollers, Arduinos and Raspberry Pi Picos, ESP32, even some RISC-V microcontrollers. Now broadly, they fall into two categories, those without wireless communication and those with. And those with typically would have Wi-Fi or Bluetooth. Now what happens if you take a microcontroller and add 4G connectivity? Not Bluetooth, not Wi-Fi, but 4G. Imagine that, imagine a microcontroller project that you could build that could be anywhere in the country. It doesn't need to be near any Wi-Fi and you can send messages to it, read data, turn things on and off, whatever, over the 4G network. Well, to do that, you'll need a device like the Nordic Semiconductor Thingy 91X. So this is a 4G microcontroller development platform. So if you want to find out more, please let me explain. Okay, so what is the Thingy 91X? It's from Nordic Semiconductor. On the outside, you kind of get this orange tangerine puck square puck shaped thing but of course that's not what's important what's important is what's on the inside and that is a microcontroller development platform with a whole bunch of interesting connectivity features 4g uh, and so on which we're going to talk about in this video so nordic semiconductor is a norwegian fabulous semiconductor company specializing in wireless communication technology for the internet of things basically it makes chips for embedded designs including arm-based microcontroller chips and wireless communication chips now to help developers it has a range of development boards and development platforms including the thingy range of course and this is the thingy 91x that we're looking at now talking of the thingy platform the thingy 53 is an iot prototyping platform built around a dual arm cortex m53 soc it can run embedded machine learning it supports Bluetooth, LE, Bluetooth Mesh, Thread, Zigbee, and Matter. And there are a whole bunch of integrated uh, sensors, including temperature, humidity, and so on. Why am I mentioning that? Because I reviewed the Thingy 53 in 2023. Uh, and so now I'm reviewing the Thingy 91X. Now, I also used the Thingy 53 in my video about what is Bluetooth Mesh. So let's move on to the Thingy 91X. What is it? So the Thingy 91X extends the Thingy family. So it's a, it is a Thingy, but how is it different to the Thingy 53, for example? Well, basically it adds 4G connectivity. So there's even a little slot for putting in a SIM card. Now, technically it has LTE M and NB IoT. What are they? Uh, well, the M in the LTE M means machine. So basically it's 4G for machines or 4G for IoT devices, and NB means narrow band. So if you were to compare those two, narrow band IoT is a much lower bandwidth, up to 159 kilobits uh, per second, uh, uplink and 127 kilobits downstream, whereas LTE for machines, 4G for machines is seven megabits. So one is kilobits, the other is megabit, so a big difference there in the bandwidth. But of course, because of that, you get a difference in the amount of data uh, you use. So if you've got a, a plan, of, uh, you're paying a telecom provider, then one is gonna send much less data and send it slower. The other is gonna send more data at a higher speed. So there's obviously gonna be a difference in the cost there. And the narrowband IoT, although technically it can cope with roaming, in other words, uh, the device is moving around it really isn't very uh it, it exists in reality whereas ltem you can do roaming so you can move around inside a country and you can move into other countries uh, and you can still get the data back now of course uh the iot narrowband version is much cheaper than the uh, ltem version so it really does depend on your use case so the narrowband version is best for cost-effective low data rate applications where device mobility isn't needed. So, you know, if this was out on a farmer's field and you were monitoring something, uh, maybe a weather station 
or soil temperature, soil humidity, and you don't have Wi-Fi out on, you know, on this farm that you know, could be quite a long way away from the main administration buildings, from the farmhouse. And so you're relying on the uh, cellular network to send you that data, and you want that data you know, just once or twice a day or something, then this would be your option. But if you are looking for something that's got higher data rates, you need mobility, so uh, asset tracking, you know, things are moving around, uh, then you're going to then you're going to need LTE M. The great thing is that the Thingy 91X supports both of them. So it's a great platform no matter which option you choose. Now another great feature of the 91X, it's got location tracking based on the cell towers, based on what Wi-Fi networks are near you, or you can even switch on the, you know, the satellite uh, global navigation and find out where you are very precisely and there are various antenna connections that you can have on the board and it also works without them uh, just depending on where you are obviously outdoors without an antenna is certainly something you're going to need uh, for you know for some kind of global positioning uh, system but using cellular and wi-fi you can get a pretty good rough idea about where something is asset tracking um, just by using the, the, the local uh, wireless communication systems. It also has built into the board temperature, humidity, air quality, air pressure, magnetic field acceleration and movement sensors. So great things that could be done with that. Everything from, as I say, uh, measuring the, you know, the temperature and the air quality and the air pressure out on a farmer's field or asset tracking and what you know how how much your box is bouncing around in the back of a lorry or something like that it also includes a, a battery that can, has all the charging circuits so you plug it into usb-c and it charges it up and also it's got some clever stuff on it that will tell you depending on the temperature what kind of uh, battery life you can expect so obviously temperature affects battery life so it can measure the temperature and it can then give you a clue on how much battery life you've got left so obviously being inside a truck inside a box asset tracking very different to something that's happening out on a field with the wind blowing and the rain and the wind and, and all that kind of stuff it's also got some user programmable buttons and leds so you can do some fancy things with it uh, and at the heart of it is a 64 megahertz cortex m33 cpu with one megabytes of onboard storage and 256k of ram so here's a look at that motherboard let's just take a whiz around so led here you've got the connection so you can have your satellite uh, global positioning uh, go in there here is uh, an antenna for uh, the wi-fi by the looks of it various chips for doing things like the wi-fi is actually part of a, of a separate switch a power switch uh, uh, an led which you can program the accelerometer there's the whole rf front end for the 4g stuff there's some programmable user buttons uh, memory now here is the sim card slot i was talking about so you literally do put the sim card in there and i'll show you that uh, in a minute uh, various selector switch you can have for the software debugging uh, here's the temperature and the humidity sensors and so on so you've got a whole bunch of things built into this board that you can then just start using as a prototype and you can then design your own board of course or just use these in whatever format you want because they come in a nice uh, plastic case so you know it's really up to you but the point is here is your launch pad into developing iot applications with 4g connectivity now the software development uh, is a little more complicated. It's not like the Arduino or the Raspberry Pi Pico. You're not just gonna quickly run MicroPython on it or quickly bring up an IDE and then just do some stuff. It is a, a level more complex than that, but for good reason, because we're talking about something that has vast uh, capabilities. And basically uh, you use the uh, SDK that is provided and that uses the Zephyr RTOS real-time operating system is an open source real-time operating system and basically the build system handles all of that you have a main.c which you can then kind of start doing things with and it handles all the stuff that RTOS handles all of the um, the Bluetooth stuff and the 4G stuff and everything and you can kind of just use it at a higher level there's a huge number of examples application protocols libraries and hardware drivers because obviously uh, Nordic want you to use this uh, and they're not just going to say, well, go work it out for yourself. They give you everything you need. So you are, you, you're fully supported in, in all of that. Uh, and so you get everything you need to get started with cellular IoT development. 
it's all on GitHub as well. That they're not trying to to make you extra license anything here. This is just they want you to be able to develop on here. And there's also a VS Code extension available, so you can actually do all of the uh, configuring of the tool chains and the SDKs and the builds and the flashing it onto the device. All comes with inside uh, VS Code, so you get that full IDE experience as well. Okay, so why would you use one of these? As I said, this is not. A replacement for an Arduino or a Raspberry Pi Pico. However, if you are working in things like logistics and asset tracking, this is the kind of thing you'll be wanting to look at. Smart cities, smart metering, smart grid monitoring, leak detection sensors, stuff that you want to put up on the top of a pole, on top of a lamp post, on top of some kind of infrastructure that already exists, and then it can communicate over the uh, cellular network back to base, back to HQ, to tell you what's going on in your smart city. This is the kind of thing we're looking at. Smart agriculture, as I mentioned, you know, monitoring soil moisture, temperature, and so on, out on a field, but you're using the cell uh, network to actually get that data back to you, weather stations, wildlife tracking even, sensors for that, so you can see what's going on around and how that's gonna impact whatever uh, particular thing it is that you're doing. And then of course, moving on, you've got industrial, smart warehousing, uh, predictive maintenance on remote machinery, you know, anything where it's remote, but there's a cell signal and you wanna get data back, uh, so rather than having to go there, visually look at something you get all the sensor data back it's coming back over the cellular network so smart everything whether that's you know industrial warehousing cities agriculture logistics this can help okay demo time so you get two pre-registered sim cards in the box very limited amount of data on them but it gives you an example of what you can do and it lets you try out the thingy 91 uh, straight from the box you just take the little sim card and pop it there in that slot and one of the demos they give you is the hello cloud demo so this is uh, shows you how you can use some special firmware on the thingy 91x using 4g using that sim card that they give you for free and then it can send up data to the cloud and then you get a cloud dashboard and here for example they're showing you the different colors the led will flash depending on what it's doing you can also see here we've got some temperature readings we've got a battery reading tells us what sim card is put in there and so on so a fully functional uh, dashboard up in the cloud connecting to the thingy device over the uh, 4G network. Other things that you can see are the firmware that's up on there. There's over the air uh, firmware updates available. Uh, and also you can configure the GPS to not just use the uh, it, the location data from the cell tower or from nearby Wi-Fi networks. You can actually configure it to use a, a global uh, navigation system. It does warn you that when you turn that on, it's going to use more battery, of course. It's going to send more data. But if you need precise, precise uh, location numbers, you can get that using the Thingy91 board. And then it sends that data over uh, the LG network. And another example down here, we can see uh, the different uh, kind of sensors, air, air pressure, air temperature, uh, air quality, and so on. They're all built in. So that's great for whatever IoT application it is that you are working on. Okay, so there you go, the Thingy 91X. Love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. My brain is already whirling about all the different possibilities that it, I could use this for in all kinds of different situations where I don't necessarily have a Wi-Fi network, but having that 4G connectivity, could I could do amazing different things. Love to know, as I say, your thoughts in the comments below. I hope you really enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. And if you like these kind of videos, then I invite you to stick around by subscribing to the channel. Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.